Hey there, I'm Felicia from We Buy Your Land for Cash. If you find yourself with an unwanted piece of property, talk to us. We'll see what we can do to help you relieve that land burden. In today's land blog video, we're going to look at 13 factors that will make your Colorado land value drop. So as a landowner in Colorado, there are 13 like, key influencers that you need to watch out for. These things can make or break your value. When my company purchases Colorado land, we check these things very carefully. Um, if you want pro tips that go with each of these 13 factors, you can follow the link in the description to get a free copy of the guide. Um, so again, the guide will list each of the 13 factors and then have a pro tip to go with each of them. So we're just gonna run through them quickly here. The first one, chain of title. This is the biggest factor. Uh, not all deeds and property transfers are created equally. The best type of deed is a warranty deed. This means that when you purchased the property, the seller pledged or warranted that they owned the property free and clear of any outstanding liens, mortgages, encumbrances, um, and that they warrant this for the history of the property. Next, accessibility. Some properties are only reached by a county easement or an unofficial privately owned trail. This normally isn't a problem for Colorado properties, but you still really need to be aware. Um, if you can only access your property through a creek or by crossing a neighbor's property, your land value is gonna be inherently capped. If your property is far from any nearby towns or cities, this could be another huge negative impact on your land value. A lot of people want rural, especially in Colorado, but they still need access to things like grocery stores and gas stations at the bare minimum. Third factor, dues. Outstanding dues against a property have a huge impact on its value. As an investor, I see this all the time. We often will pay off dues when we purchase Colorado land. Um, and a lot of people don't know that the outstanding dues actually get transferred to the new owner when a piece of land is sold. So if you don't keep up with filing with your property taxes every year, a tax lien can be filed against your property. Um, a tax lien is a legal claim against your property while there are debts owing. And this can be filed by the county or by an individual looking to own your property. So they're essentially hoping that you don't pay it off um, and that the county seizes it, the government seizes the property, um, and the people that have a lien filed against it will kind of get a stake in it at that point. You can pay it off um, and have the lien removed, but of course, if you're a little strapped for cash, it can be really difficult to do that. Um, the only way to prevent a tax lien being filed against your property is to keep up with the burden of annual taxes, paying them each and every year. Land use. Land can only be used for specific purposes. And unfortunately, you don't get to decide what those purposes are. Land can be restricted at the county or at the municipal or metro level. A lot of people think they can drive their RV down to Colorado, park it on their land, and come and go as they please. And that's not a guarantee. Um, I know from experience that many counties in Colorado will not allow you to permanently camp or RV on your property. There are often limits on the number of consecutive days allowed for these types of activities. Um, and there are municipal restrictions for you to be aware of as well. So if there's a lot of restrictions in limited uses for your lot, this could be a negative mark that will bring down your land value. HOA and POA. Um, these aren't too common in Colorado. They can sometimes be a good thing. They're often gated areas accessible only to property owners. Um, and they'll usually take care of, let's say, snow removal and road maintenance, which can be a big help if you're up in the mountains. And you probably wouldn't mind an HOA if you are a weekend camper, you know, you own a couple of acres in the Rocky Mountains um, because like I said, the HOA will take care of road access and any common facilities. But for vacant land, you know, HOAs and POAs are often seen as negative because you're paying all these additional fees. Like they have an annual fee every year, right? So you're paying all these additional fees and you aren't always getting additional benefits. So that's kind of how they can affect and bring down your land value. 
Utilities. Power is not a given. Uh, even in the more residential areas of Colorado, it's definitely not a given for the larger, larger and agricultural plots out of the cities out in the Rocky Mountains. It can be very expensive to have electricity brought in, and a lot of Colorado counties don't approve of alternative power sources. City water and sewer is obviously the best option, um, but not having these isn't as bad as not having power because if you lack these, you can install a septic or drill a well. Um, however, both of those are pricey and could be a negative factor in determining your land value. Natural rights. I forget what number we're on. Seven maybe? Natural rights refer to water, mineral, and timber. And these are three separate entities. They often aren't conveyed together um, or with each ownership transfer. Water rights are especially important in Colorado because without them, it's much more difficult to build on the property. And going back up the title chain to secure water rights can be extremely expensive. Septic requirements. Some counties in Colorado, and a lot of people don't know this, but some counties in Colorado require a one acre minimum as guidance for septics. Um, for example, Colorado City in Pueblo County has this requirement. The guideline is there needs to be room for at least two systems in case one fails. Uh, so in general, one acre is used as the minimum for guidelines. In some areas, it might even be more than one acre because of other environmental factors like the topography, uh, maybe the soil is really soft, there's an aggressive slope, and that'll kind of dictate and demand and determine rather how much space is needed. So if your property can't accommodate a septic, it can have a negative impact on your land value. Junk. We have made the mistake, uh, even buying the hundreds of properties that we have, we have made the mistake of buying property with junk and abandoned trailers and cars on it. And let me tell you from experience, it is very costly to have it all cleaned up. Abandoned vehicles, boats, sheds, trailers, all these large objects, um, they take a lot of work. You can't just pick them up with a garbage bag and they can really hurt your property value. Neighbors. Unfortunately, how a neighbor uses their property affects the value of your property. Thankfully, there are zoning codes and restrictions in place that prevent things from getting too out of hand, but the rules might not cover every distinct situation. So imagine you purchase a lot in Colorado and you want to use it as a family weekend getaway cabin. You go through the effort and costs of building this cabin only to realize once you start spending a couple weekends there, uh, that one of your neighbors has decided to use their property as a halfway house. Or maybe they're just really rowdy, right? It's not a great environment for kids. They're outside with loud music. They're drinking, socializing all day, all night. Not the type of environment you've envisioned for a weekend with family or a weekend in nature. It's not exactly relaxing, is it? Now, if you're nosy, if your noisy or annoying neighbor isn't breaking the zoning rules or municipal bylaws, there's often not much you can do, even though it's terrible for your property value and very frustrating for you to have to live through an experience. Market prices, similar to bad neighbors, this is a tough one to, to accept because it's out of your control. This is why location is so important for land ownership. If your property is in a metro area, you can expect more volatility than in a completely rural area far away from cities and towns. That volatility can work in your favor or against it, right? So you get to ride the high when times are good, but when times are bad, that floor is just going to fall out from under you. If the market is reacting poorly, it's going to be tough for you to sell your property. In these situations, you likely won't get whatever the current market value is. Now you could try holding, holding onto your lot, hope for better times. Um, and that's a fine strategy if you don't need the cash from a land sale right away. Ultimately in a bad market, property value goes down. Even if your property has no issues, no outstanding taxes or debts, you could still end up losing money on it. Natural disasters. 
Natural disaster recovery is becoming more and more important. FEMA and the Colorado State Forest Service have data showing the increasing frequency of wildfires. Unfortunately, a lot of areas outside the high altitude mountains in Colorado are in a very high or relatively high risk area. This means that the ability to recover is a must know for landowners. Rebuilding after wildfires takes quite some time. And if the city or county can't support a healthy recovery, your property could be totally burnt or covered with debris for months or years, leaving your land value negatively affected. Topography. Sloping is not something that can be easily fixed. Um, if it is fixable, it would require a ton of fill dirt depending on the building area, and that would be extremely expensive. For most buyers, this solution is just out of reach. If the sloping is severe and not fixable, your property value is capped because the uses are limited. Um, and I understand it's the mountains, people understand mountains are sloped, right? But they still need to be able to build that cabin on the slope, get a campground in, park the RV. There still needs to be some sort of um, level pad that they can work with. Now, I know this is overwhelming. A lot of landowners uh, who may have inherited or been gifted Colorado land or who bought it sight unseen might not be aware of these factors and how they can negatively impact land values. Um, if you are one of these landowners, don't be hard on yourself. It's extremely difficult to track real estate values. It's like trying to track a moving target. If you own land in Colorado and you don't want to deal with the headache of valuation and trying to account for all these changing factors, don't worry because you have other options. The quickest and easiest option for you to get rid of your land headache is to sell to a professional investor like my team here at We Buy Your Land for Cash. Um, if you choose us, you can expect no commissions or fees, no closing costs, no hassle, uh, no marketing or other work to sell the property. We can do it in less than 10 business days and you get cash in hand. So if you'd like more information on how that process works, uh, what kind of cash offer we can give you for your Colorado land, you can give us a call or text 313-307. 6737 and we'll see how we can help you out. Again, don't forget to grab your free copy of the Colorado Land Value Guide. We go over these points in detail with pro tips for each one. It's in an easy PDF form um, and it's free for you. You just have to tell me where to send it to your email. So I'll put the page, the web page for that in the description of this video. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'm happy to have you here. Leave a comment, say hello, tell me where you own land in Colorado, how you purchased it or where you gifted it, how did you come to own it. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we do lots of videos like this and you don't want to miss out. Talk to you soon.